Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometric system. Now, why did I call this a geometric system? Because it comes from a geometry problem. So the problem is, what right triangles with integer lengths have the property that their area equals their perimeter? So we're looking for right triangles with this special property. And the x, y, and z are the side lengths, where, where z is the hypotenuse, the longest length in the triangle. So this gives us the following system. x squared plus y squared equals z squared, which is the Pythagorean theorem for the legs x, y, and the hypotenuse z. And of course, the area of a right triangle with legs x and y is going to be x, y divided by 2, or x times y divided by 2, and the perimeter is going to be x plus y plus z. So that's where the system comes from, and this is a really nice problem. I'll share with you some of the links that I could find. This is a very classic problem and it doesn't have very many solutions. At this point, you might just start speculating, okay, this could be an answer, this could be an answer, but that's not just the purpose, you know, we're not just trying to guess and check here, but we're going to be solving this algebraically. I hope you'll forgive me for not doing geometry puzzles and this will replace a geometry problem. Let's go ahead and solve this. So, what am I gonna do? Well, I have a system of equations and let's go ahead and manipulate it. So one of the things we can do here is basically focus on z here. So isolate z from the second equation and plug it into the first one. And that's going to give us an equation in two variables, which is obviously easier than solving an equation with three variables, especially something like this, you know, have, may have infinitely many solutions and not very easy to handle. All right, so let's go ahead and do that substitution. Uh, z here, so if you isolate z, it's going to equal xy over 2 minus x minus y, and let's go ahead and substitute that in the Pythagorean relationship. x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared, which can be written as xy over 2 minus x minus y, and then you're going to quantity to square that. Well, this is the equation that I was talking about. It's in two variables. We got rid of the z for now. At least we can go back to it later by substitution, but is this equation really simple? Well, we just need to find out, right? A lot of times, sometimes people ask me, like, how do you know how, to, how what to do? You don't. You just try different approaches until you get one, and if you do a lot of practice, then at some point, certain things you start seeing. Okay, anyways, I talk too much, so I'm going to stop. Let's go ahead and square this. And when I'm squaring this, allow me to write it this way so that I can square, like, a difference of A minus B. So it's going to look like then square first term minus 2 times the first times the second, which is x plus y, plus x plus y quantity squared. Now notice that I have x squared plus y squared on the left-hand side and the, the quantity x plus y squared on the right-hand side. Obviously, certain terms are going to cancel out. Of course, the 2 is going to cancel out as well, leaving us with a 4, but we're going to multiply everything by 4 once we simplify this a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that first, and then we'll multiply by 4. So x squared plus y squared is equal to x squared y squared over 4 minus xy times the quantity x plus y, and then I'm going to expand the square, x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. You don't have to write it this way, but I just find it more convenient. And then these two terms are going to cancel out from each side. So we're getting something like this, which is, again, not, not very easy looking, right? It's not, it's not simple, but we're going to manipulate it. Don't worry. We're going to put it all together. So let's multiply both sides by um, 4. And notice that we got 0 here. So I can just write it as, okay, I'm, let me write it first, and then I'll multiply by 4. How about that? so that I'm not skipping steps here, because sometimes in the interest of time, I'm kind of rushing through this, and I don't really want to do this all the time. Okay, so this is something that I get, right? Okay, what am I going to do next? Well, this is equal to zero, first of all. Notice that we got for zero from the left-hand side, and now let's multiply both sides by four, because I want to eliminate fractions, obviously, and that would be a good thing. So this should give me x squared, y squared. When I multiply by four, I should be getting a four here, and then this should be an 8xy. Okay, this is a complicated looking expression still, but one thing that's good about this equation is that you can factor it. How? Look at it carefully. And if you don't see it, look at it again, look hard. So notice that the first term contains an x squared y squared, the second one has an xy in it, and the third one has an xy in it. In other words, 
x, y is a common factor. So why not factor it out? Especially when certain things equal to zero, you should definitely think about factoring. Because in the end, we were trying to solve for x and y, and factoring would definitely help. So let's go ahead and take out x, y here. And when we do, we should be getting x, y from here because that's x, y quantity squared. And then minus, since I took out the x, y, I, I end up with four times the quantity x plus y. And when you take out the x, y, you end up with eight here. And the whole thing is equal to zero. Great. Now, obviously, we're not going to be looking for degenerate. Is that generate or degenerate? I think it's degenerate. Anyways, uh, the de generous. No, degenerate. Okay. We're not looking for solutions where x, y is equal to zero because that would mean x is zero or y is zero, but we don't care about those, right? Those are not good triangles. We're gonna be looking for good triangles and they're gonna come from the second factor, which is this one. So let's go ahead and set that equal to zero and work it out and see what this gives us. And the solution to this problem is something that we talked about before. I'm not gonna name it right now, but at this point, if you already know it, you can go ahead and write it in the chat. Let me know what you think but I just don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, let's go ahead and set this expression equal to zero. And now this is what we get. Now, I want to have my constant on the right-hand side and I want to have the product first, which is nice. Hopefully you notice by, by this time what I'm getting at. Okay, if you said Simon, you got it right. Yes, we're going to use Simon. Why? Because you can do, you can factor out the x from the first two terms. I can take out x. And then I end up with negative 4y. So I want to have y minus 4 just like this one. So the trick is, why don't you take a negative 4 out and start writing y? But we're missing something, of course. We don't have y minus 4 because we don't have that term. But what I can do is pretend that I have y minus 4. Of course, that's going to bring in an extra term here. What is that gonna bring? It brings an extra 16. So in other words, I'm adding 16 to both sides. Shh, don't tell anyone, okay? I'm just adding 16 here and here, and that's okay, but that brings us the same factor. Does that make sense? That's how Simon works. And in case you're wondering what Simon is, it is called, also called SSFFT, which is Simon's favorite factoring trick. But I just call it Simon because it's shorter. Okay. So I'm using Simon here, and since I added 16 to both sides, that is going to equal 8. Great. So now we have a common factor, y minus 4, y minus 4. That was the goal. And of course, you can do this problem differently. But this gives us x minus 4 multiplied by y minus 4 is equal to 8. And if you want, I can also tell you, you don't have to use Simon here. If you want to do it differently, that's fine too. Let's say you factor out the x here. You got x times y minus 4. And then put the other term. Let me just show you real quick here. Take out the x and you're going to get y minus 4. And then on the other side, you're going to have 4y minus 8. And then you can divide both sides by y minus 4. And manipulate the right-hand side. You can just add and subtract some terms. And you can get x in terms of y. And from there, you can also proceed. So you don't have to use Simon. This is kind of like a little bit of using Simon. But anyways, whatever. So this is my product. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? I have two integers. Are they integers? Yeah, we said that the lengths are integers. So these are integers. Not only integers, but they have to be positive integers, of course. So I have to factor 8. So what are the options? Well... I can go with 8 and 1, or I can go with 4 and 2, or I can go with 1 and 8, or 2 and 4. But notice that we're interested in different triangles. So when I use, you know, 8, 1 and 1, 8, it's basically going to give me the same solutions because x and y are interchangeable. Z is not because that's the hypotenuse. But we don't really have to worry about all these cases because they're just going to be repeated. So let's go ahead and focus on these ones. The first one gives me x minus 4 is equal to 8, which means from here x is equal to 12 y minus 4 is equal to 1 gives me y is equal to 5. And of course, this is a right triangle, so z must be 13. So that gives me one of the solutions. Let's go ahead and look at the other solution and see what that gives us. And that should give us something different, right? So what if x minus 4 is equal to 4? This should give me x equals 8. And if y minus 4 is equal to 2, that should give me y equals 6. And of course, z is going to be 10 from Pythagorean theorem. How did I find the z values? I just uh, 
know it that 6, 8, 10 is a very famous uh, triangle because 3, 4, 5 is the only one that has consecutive integers. As you know, if you just double everything, you get 6, 8, 10. So if you're dealing with right triangles, Pythagorean theorem, you should definitely know all these triples because they're very, very common. 5, 12, 13, and 6, 8, 10. So we have two types of triangles here then. Let's go ahead and write it down as ordered triples. X, Y, Z can be written as... Uh, why did I write 3? Because I was talking about 3, 4, 5. I got confused. So I have the uh, 6, 8, 10, and then I have the 5, 12, and 13. And of course, since x and y are interchangeable, 8, 6, 10 would work for x, y, z values, and 12, 5, and 13 would also work. But in essence, we only have two triangles that are different, and those are 6, 8, 10, and 5, 12, 13 triangle. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.